Hey gang, Professor McElroy here. Uh, learning module two, week two of multimedia portfolio. Uh, really good job with the week one assignments to date. Uh, the dream job paper, the self-assessment uh, form, uh, beginning to develop the first case study in your multimedia portfolio, which is your personal branding. Remember that personal branding is something that's going to be used in the master template in the lower right-hand corner or the right page of the facing page spread in your master template. And it's also going to be your very first case study. Remember that page one is going to be our cover page, which is gonna have our name, the word portfolio, uh, potentially a collage or some kind of theme-based cover concept uh, that we're going to wrap through our uh, facing pages case study designs as well. Uh, that's not going to happen until week four. We're just building the beginning foundational elements and kind of the sequencing for our case studies, our facing page case studies. So just as a reinforcer, remember that page two in your portfolio template will be your personal brand, your personal identity mark. Remember, the even pages are artwork. So on page two, we want to make sure that we showcase uh, our personal brand, our personal logo in one color, two color, and full color. Uh, you can do that kind of in a collage way. Maybe you want to make the full color a little bit bigger than the one and two color. You just want to showcase uh, your personal brand in all of its potential applications. Some students choose to do uh, one color being black. Uh, two color and full color, and then uh, a reverse or inverted one color, which means the white logo on a black background. So in theory, you could have four of the same logo design put on your page two in your portfolio. Some students also like to showcase the process. So sometimes if you have them available, they like to show some of the uh, possible personal logos that were created that didn't make the cut. Like if you sketched a little bit on paper first, or you went into Illustrator and created a couple of them before you settled on your final design, sometimes it's nice on the even pages of your portfolio, portfolio to show the process, show some of the preliminary designs, and then the final design that was settled on. Just keeping in mind that that final design on page number two will be your logo applied to your swag or merchandising material on page number three. So at the end of this week, learning module two, we should have a submission for our personal logo in the template, creating the artwork on page two and the swag on page three. And then this week's case study assignment is to create a series of three billboards. They can either be web banner style billboards or print physical environmental graphic installation billboards uh, that we're going to create. I like to choose the service industry because I like to highlight or showcase uh, things that happen potentially here locally or just an industry that is readily available really quite honestly around the globe. So I love theme parks, amusement parks, entertainment complexes, things that people go to for entertainment, dinner theaters. So an amusement park is a really great first non-personal logo case study. So I love to give the students that project to kind of kick things off for the non-personal case study build. So that means that page four and page five in your portfolio book will be the amusement park project. So we'll be creating a series of three and or a campaign of three billboards to advertise a recreational or amusement park location. It could be an aquarium. It could be an amusement park. It could be a dinner theater. It could be Legoland. It could be any of these places that people gather for entertainment purposes. I use the term amusement park because that's a really easy one for most people to gravitate towards. Keeping in mind that part of this brand build will include us reimagining the brand itself. So if you pick something like Legoland, I want you on page four of your portfolio to give us an interpretation of the brand itself. 
how you might tweak, adjust, modify the current identity for this particular amusement park. And it will follow the same format as page two in your portfolio. We want to see a one color. We want to see a two color. We want to see a full color. We want to see an interpretation of what you see it potentially being. So, and if you wanna show process sketches, you wanna you want to show the original or the one that is currently being used in your interpretation of a new way of branding the amusement park or the dinner theater or the uh, uh, water park, any of these kind of amusement park style places. I wouldn't even be against something like uh, a movie theater complex uh, if you were more interested in something like that, like a silver spot or one of the ones that maybe isn't regal, but is still one that is like a destination or a Dave and Buster's or something like that. Uh, so it's up to you. Just keeping in mind that we're trying to set up a case study environment where even pages are artwork branding conceptual items and the odd pages are those brandable items in a real world application. So page three of your portfolio is your personal identity on marketing swag. Page five in your portfolio is this concept of a campaign, an advertising campaign, a billboard sequence. And those are imagined in a real world installation on the odd page of your second case study. First case study being your personal brand, second case study being this amusement park concept. And I shared a few designs in our announcement section so we could really talk about repetition of elements, location of elements, what makes a campaign so that you can see the consistency of application across multiple applications. So take a look at this case study for billboards right here. Notice that the concept of this curved orange shape at the bottom of the billboard is consistent on both billboards. Notice the location and the web address is the exact same font, the exact same color, the exact same size in the exact same location in the billboard template. Also notice the treatment of the logo, the scale, the proportion, the location, exactly the same. This part of the campaign is the same. You will notice a similar font treatment, but a different call to action. So the beginning of the statement's blue. The second part of the statement is bold. It's orange gradient to yellow. It has a 3D quality. It has a drop shadow on both billboards, but they aren't the same call to action. They're just in the same style. Notice that this is more of a left align with the image on the right-hand side. Notice this one is more of a right align and the image is on the left-hand side. There's lots of ways to build a campaign, build a sequence, build a series of things that look very similar to the eye, but do address a different message. But you wanna make sure that logo placement, contact information, which in most cases is web address, general location of, of, of amusement park, if that is appropriate above the URL, call to action, very consistent color, typography, scale, proportion, location, effects, very similar, but two different images, two different call to actions, but the same campaign. So let's make sure that when we're bu building ours, it feels that way. And look at this one. This is a print ad, but you get the same curved orange shape. But in this case, you would get it on the top with the logo instead of the bottom for a billboard, but the same elements, same 3D typography, same bright, bold imagery, same stripe with the web address on the bottom. But you'll notice here, because it's a print ad, it includes the phone number, not just the address. Print is a little bit different than billboard, but you can see the same elements, the same typography, the same color, the same shape, the same overall look of the design is very inconsistent from print ad to billboards. And it would be the same for web banners as well. Same orange stripe 
same white border, same logo treatment, same web address, same general location, same kind of call to action. So different media, different solutions. The campaign is very consistently the same though. So just keep that in mind as we start to develop our billboards. Look at this beautiful one with the texture in the background, the big logo, the web address, really important that the web address is on there, the call to action, the image collage, very consistent. Take a look at this one, the wave shape that runs along the bottom, the logo in the corner, the phone number, the web address, the imagery, the same font color, font style on both billboards. But look at this one, small logo, down here, this billboard is more square, so bigger <coughs> logo here. But look at these two. They're actually two different proportions of billboard, but the same photos and the same elements. So very important for consistency of application. Color shapes, color, uh, same color application, same font, same typography, same color, same outline, same outer glow same logo, whether it's full color versus black and white versus two color, very consistent application across the campaign. So your three should have similar color swipe, similar kind of web address location, similar logo treatment, similar general layout, right? It could be two different call to actions two or three different images of choice, but the logo placement, the logo treatment, the web address location, the way that the information is separated between color shapes and photographs, font treatment, uh, any effects, 2D versus 3D, should be very consistent across application. We're building a series of three billboards as a campaign. Elements need to be consistent, need to be the same need to use the same typography, need to have the same web address. Don't write www on the first billboard and leave it off of the other two. If there isn't www, it should be just the name of the URL, the same on all three billboards. I like to see the scale, the proportion, and the location of the logo the same on all three. Yes, if the proportion of the billboard changes from elongated to more square, it gives you a better chance to make a bigger logo impression. But we should be building across our three billboard campaigns a very consistent use of application. Hopefully this starts to inspire you. Until I see your personal brand case study, page two and three, and your first out of personal case study, non-personal case study, which is our amusement park billboards, artwork on the even page, billboard mocked in real world environment on the odd page until we see these first two case studies. So we should be through five pages in our portfolio book at the end of this learning module too. Keeping in mind, page one is our book cover, the cover to our portfolio. We won't actually build the completed collage elements naming style for the cover until we get into week four, when we build the case study backgrounds. When we start tying the case studies together with a texture background, we will then address the front cover, which will have the same texture, same look, same background graphics, personal logo larger, name portfolio underneath, and that sort of thing. So it's an evolutionary thing that starts with page two and three, which is your personal identity, then goes to page four and five, which is our billboard artwork. Remember, even pages of your portfolio is artwork only, branding, illustrations, uh, concept, little blurb on the concept, that sort of thing. Think of Duffy's, right? Artwork, label design by itself, on the even page, the odd pages label on the bottle. So even pages is artwork, odd pages is real world professional mock-up, photo manipulated mock-up. If it's a package design, it's on the box or the bottle. If it's a billboard, it's a billboard in a photo of a billboard placed in downtown in New York City, that sort of thing. So you wanna make sure that you're feeding the potential employer 
the even pages, which is how I design the art and the odd pages of this is what the art would look like in real life. So we're spoon feeding the process. The ball is gonna get rolling. Next week, we're gonna do multiple case studies. So let's make sure we get the first couple ones formatted correctly, looking good, looking professional. That way, when we get down to having four or five case studies done and we're in week four, we can build our cover page, we can build our background textures, and we can write a few blurbs about our clients, our process, and the case studies themselves and the software used. So that's the process we're going to go over for the four weeks. And so hopefully you're enjoying the process. Hopefully you have some things in other classes you've created that you might think are fun to build on. But many students, because they are further along in the creative process, decide to not take a project they did in a previous class and enhance it. But in most cases, students decide to create from scratch in portfolio class because they know more, they have greater skill, they're more comfortable in the applications, their thought process is more thoroughly developed and their understanding of finished application is a little bit further along. But if you have any preliminary things, if you've created the, anything you want me to look at, please remember you can send me a JPEG, send me a PDF, email it to me and we will continue the portfolio building process. If you did not log on live tonight to watch the preview lecture, please make sure that you click on the recording in the announcement section when I post it up there so you can get some true descriptive instructor insight into what we're building as we move forward in our portfolio. Great job so far. I try to keep the lectures more compact in portfolio because this is a capstone course and you should be spending the time developing, fine tuning, creating your case study projects. The more you put in, the more you get out. So I hope you're taking the time, the effort and energy to put in so that we get the maximum out. Remember, this is also a template. So this is a space holder type of situation where we put our best foot forward as we are designers in this day, time and age. And as we mature and evolve and get more time client projects under our belt, we have the opportunity to replace elements with newer and updated elements as we create them both professionally and in our coursework. So great job so far. I can't wait to see what you do with the amusement park project.